What's going on guys? I'm Shuru Takara here and today's video, yes I am sitting, I'm not standing. <clears throat> um, I'm a little closer to the mic. See if this works. Hopefully my audio will be really good. Um, but today's just going to be a story video on basically what happened when I went scuba diving. Yes, I'm scuba certified in open water only for now. I am going to try to get a dive master's later, but that's a little bit down the road because I am poor and I'm still trying to get all my scuba gear you know, bought instead of having to rent it every time. But yeah, um, so this is a scuba story of when I went, actually I went up to uh, Lake Phoenix to get my certification and when I went up there, that's, this is when this story was Okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> so we're at the Lake Phoenix to get my certification. Um, it was on the final day that I was there. Um, basically, we went underwater and we were doing a okay. Um, uh, we visited like an underwater helicopter, an old Huey helicopter, and it was freezing cold. In a wetsuit, a, it was only a five millimeter. I was supposed to have a seven millimeter, but I did it in a five millimeter <laughs> wetsuit, which basically five millimeters is really small. It's thin. Seven millimeter sticker keeps you warmer. So yeah, uh, regret that because that wasn't very fun. I was literally, I was shivering. <laughs> I was about to say time to go up, <laughs> but I toughed it out. And then we went up higher to where the water was warmer. Um, so then I was okay. And then we went to go see seahorses in a freshwater lake. Um, actually, it's a man-made lake. But yeah, that was interesting seeing freshwater seahorses. If you're a biologist, you understand what I mean when I say that. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, I didn't fall for it when the teacher said, let's go see the freshwater seahorses. I didn't fall for it because I, I do biology. So, yeah, I knew what he meant. Um, and nobody else did. <laughs> A lot of people believed it. They were like, huh. So, I let it play along. <laughs> I shook my head at the teacher. He knew I didn't get, he knew I understood what he meant. And, but he knew the other students didn't. <laughs> so, we went to go see these freshwater seahorses and we sat on them. Played around on and stuff like that. Uh, not gonna explain that actually. You all have to figure that out on your own. <laughs> um, yeah, we got to ride underwater seahorses. That was pretty cool. And then we were going to an underwater basketball court that had a bowling ball <laughs> as the basketball. Because I mean, you're underwater, basketball would just float. Bowling ball actually works like a basketball. It's actually really hard to pick up, surprisingly. Anyway. Yeah, there's that, and the, the bowling ball almost fell on this kid's head, um, but I forget, I think, I don't know if we shoved him out of the way, or if somebody caught the ball just before it hit him in the head, because he wasn't paying attention, he was underneath the, underneath the hoop, and that was my dive partner, <laughs> but we were all like in big groups, so we were all each other's partner, but he was mine specifically to watch, and I was like, oh god, he's gonna die, uh, Cause yeah, we were under the. I mean, he he would have came up and probably not ruptured lungs or anything. Would have been okay from that, but definitely would have knocked him out <laughs> um, or hurt really bad. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> that happened. Uh, I was having troubles with my buoyancy, so I kept like smacking into the bottom, smacking into sticks and stuff that was sticking up from the ground. <laughs> but I mean, I was able to eventually get it, so I passed. <laughs> um. But I did really good overall, because uh, I did good in navigation, because we had to learn how to navigate underwater with a compass. Um, sorry, it's like really hot today. That's another reason I'm sitting down. Um, but yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, the navigation part with a compass. I now know how to navigate with a compass, <laughs> which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, then a big story, and we're heading to the basketball court. I was st screwing around with my buoyancy, trying to get it just right, and I wasn't looking up, I was looking at my, like, I think I was looking at my gauges or something at the time, or a compass, I was looking at something, and 
I ended up being like a hundred feet from the group. And visibility is only like 50 feet, so I could barely see where they were. And I smacked the bottom. Like, but I caught myself with my hand. That is not something you do. <laughs> Unless you're wearing, I wasn't wearing gloves. Don't touch the bottom with bare hands. Hit it with your knees, whatever's covered with wetsuit or something. Hit it with that. And I felt something like bite my hand. It like scraped up against it, felt like it bit. And then I looked down, and all I see is this black soot just kicking up all over the place. And I was like, oh, I hit the bottom. It was my feet doing it. And then I realized, wait a minute, something just grabbed my hand. And all of a sudden, I see the dirt. It starts going off that direction. <laughs> and you see this cloud of dust just going along, away from me. And then I saw it circle back, and I was like, oh god, I'm gonna get eaten alive by something. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Here it is, and I was looking around for my instructor to like call for help, and there was nobody. <laughs> so I fixed my buoyancy really quickly, definitely learned how to do it from then on out, and hotailed it back to the group. <laughs> Told the teacher later, and he's like, well, you probably just hit a rock or something, and you stirred up the soot. I was like, no, rocks don't move a direction away from you and then circle back around. <laughs> But that was scary. Um, I have nightmares about that. Not really, but like I constantly, anytime I think of scuba, that is the first thing that pops in my mind. Is I still don't know what I touched. <laughs> I hit something. It was either spiky or its teeth grabbed me or something. It didn't draw blood. It just like peeled some skin. Um, so it looks like I scraped it up against something. That's why the teacher thinks it was just a rock. But it was moving. No, nah, it was moving. <laughs> It won't no rock. <laughs> Rocks don't move. <laughs> um, cause it moved like a good ten feet. Cause I could see it like something scurrying, kicking up the, the soot, the the, the gr whatever the the bottom was made of, like soot or sand. I call it soot cause it's black. But I mean, we were kind of deep, so we're starting to lose color perception. Um, but yeah, that's that was a fun scuba story. Um, another one. I helped this. Uh. I helped the kid, like, I carried my tank, which was half full, and this kid's tank, because he was worn out, he was a little, he was young, and so, excuse me, uh, so I carried his tank too, now it's, it's a children's tank, so it was, it was small, but it still weighed about 30 pounds or so, 50 pounds, and my gear was like 50, 60 pounds, 80 pounds, it was heavy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, I had to carry his gear and my gear, and by his gear, I mean all his gear. I had his entire BCD, tank, regulator, computer, it was all. And I was carrying it in front like this, and I had my tank and stuff on my back, because we have to walk a distance back to the campsite to, uh, ungear and put everything away in the trailers and everything. So... What people don't get is that, uh, like Phoenix, there's a big hill. I mean, it is steep. My parents looked at it and they were like, oh, we ain't walking down there. Uh, cause they, they were the ones who drove me up there. I could have drove it, but they wanted me to be safe. So they drove me up there and then they looked at that and they're like, there's no way you're going to come back up this hill with a hundred pounds of gear on you. I did it and I carried someone else's gear <laughs> up the steep I mean, it's a big hill, and it was a good, I'm trying to think how many feet away this site was, let's see, 40, 80, it was probably not good with this, I'm going to say between two, between three and 600 feet, probably more than that, because I, I, again, I'm bad with distances, um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, um, I should have covered my mouth, <laughs> my muzzle uh i'm gonna spread germs uh i'm gonna spread a room everywhere <laughs> uh but yeah i carried that up there and then the next day i was like i was dead all that oh <laughs> so this is all i could do to carry my gear and his gear and not like wimp out and ask somebody else for help <laughs> uh well i was the only one there me and him were so yeah i got it back uh one of the dive instructors like thanked me for doing that. Um, 
yeah, that was that was pretty much my dive experience. That was when I got certified. That's the only time I dove or anything other than a pool. So yeah, um, I gotta get a dive buddy to dive with more often, and I gotta start getting my own gear because I found out not many places around here. You see, we had scuba gear, even though we're on the ocean. <laughs> the closest place I found is like Sea Colony up in Baltimore, which is far away from me. But yeah, uh, that's all. That, that's my scuba story. So, uh, yeah. Bye.